Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to make an, an ornament, a Christmas tree ornament, and we're going to start with these wood shims. Now this is not my um, original ornament. Uh, I watched a lady a couple years ago and her name was um, Barb, I think, and she was from the shabby tree and that's a Facebook group and she made this ornament and obviously I'm going to put my own spin on it uh, but just the basic idea of this candle ornament it's going to be three candles uh, was hers I imagine unless she got it from somewhere else uh, but I want to round the top just very slightly you don't want it too round on top because we just want it to look like a candle that's burnt that is burning. So uh, on wood shims, if you've never used a wood shim before, um, they are used to, mostly to install doors, but one end is much thinner than the other end. As you can see there, it's, it, it's so thin on that one end that you can just trim with some old scissors. I wouldn't use my good ones, but, um, but you can trim it with that. And, uh, and then I just take some sandpaper and sand around the edges really well and uh, just to smooth this out. Now I want three different sizes of candles here. So once I get this sanded down, I'm, I take it outside and I just use my um, table saw, but um, you could use, um, probably could even use um, a utility knife for this. But I cut one inch off one and two inches off the next. And uh, then that will give me three different sizes. One, obviously, I don't cut at all. This ornament uh, she did in more of a shabby chic style, I, I would say, because she, she used doilies a lot. Um, and I'm going to do one like that. But I'm going to show how we can use this ornament in four different uh, decor styles. So I'm going to do one in shabby chic. One will go on my faith tree. One will be um, farmhouse style. And then I'll do one in a primitive style. And like I said, these are very versatile. So... Uh, it just all depends on how you embellish them. But once I get these sanded and cut down to the size that I want, then I'm going to paint them. And I've chosen the color buttercream for this. And I don't worry with, uh, with full coverage. I just do one coat on them. And... Um, like I said, I don't worry with full coverage. And here, I've already cut these down. You could almost dry brush these. You actually could if you wanted. And you can get these wood shims at any uh, large hardware store that sells doors. Um, and I imagine even if they didn't sell doors, because these can be used for other things also. But... Um, Mostly you'll you'll get them, and I found them in the door uh, department. So, but they're they're very inexpensive, and uh, I usually get the longer ones. But like I said, they only had the eighty inch, and that worked out well because they were the right length for the eight inch one to be the largest one, and then I cut one down to seven inches and one to six, and that's just. Um, that doesn't have to be exactly that size. That's just the size that I did mine. So once I get these painted and let them dry, then I, I do a little bit more sanding around the edges just to add some extra distress. You're not going to see it that much because uh, this is very light wood. And then I take my antique um, ink and um, my little blender tool and I... Um, antique around the edges of these. I concentrate mostly around the edges and the top and the bottom, uh, but I do a little bit of extra blending into the uh, into the rest of it. But like I said, I'm just mainly adding some distress around the edges. 
And I get a lot of questions about the tool that I use to blend uh, my ink, and it's just called an ink blending tool, and they're very inexpensive. Uh, you can get them, and they come with some extra disc that you can change out that just um, that just attach with Velcro. And if you don't have this tool, you could use a makeup sponge to to apply this. Also, it's just this tool is just very easy to work with. I think. So once I get these uh, distressed with the ink the way I want them, then I need to make them look like candle wax is dripping down the top. So um, as you might guess, I'm gonna use um, my hot glue for this. So I just hold my candle upright and then I just put some glue and just kind of let it drip. So like I'll start in one little area and hold it there a minute so that it drips down in that place. And and then uh, I do that in a few different places and then just kind of let it just drip down. So you want kind of an organic look there, but um, really isn't important that it's just so. You just, you just want a few different places, or at least a couple different places, where your candle wax is just dripping down. And I do that with all three of these. And this will dry kind of a milky white, so, um, so I don't need to paint this. It'll look like the color of wax anyway. This is a very quick ornament to do if you're doing several uh, together because uh, you can just um, you can cut all your sticks first and then sand all your sticks and then paint them all and then then uh, all the other steps go pretty quickly so now I, I just cut the shape of a flame out and I'm not specific on that shape I just kind of cut what I think looks like a flame flame and you want a pretty good size neck and by neck, I mean that little area that you're going to glue onto your stick. So we're just going to glue that onto the back of the stick. And I didn't mention this is fabric. Uh, actually, this is quilt fabric that I have uh, starched. So um, I can attach a video, if you've not seen it, where I make homemade starch out of cornstarch and water. And that's all that I've done to this fabric is just stiffened it up now the lady that i saw do, saw do this she used cookie sheet from the dollar tree and cut out the flames that way and painted that uh, and that works fine but it's very bendable and the flame just wants to droop down sometimes if you're not careful so i just thought this stiffened fabric would work a lot better and now just because i have my buttercream color out uh, then I put a coat of buttercream, and I just don't worry about painting the back of the flame. I just do the top, the front, and I'm putting the buttercream on it, and that's just kind of a base color uh, because what I'm going to do is just take some gold and any kind of gold paint you want to use. I'm just using craft paint, and I'm just going to kind of blend some gold into that white, and... Um, I just feel like that looks more like a flame. So as you can see here, I'm using the Folk Arts um, craft paint. And then I just kind of blend it in there until I get the color flame that I want. So once I finish painting the flames, and uh, ideally I would dry each step first. And when you're doing several of these, then the first ones you start working with will start to dry so you don't have to wait on on your uh, steps to dry like I had to. But once you get them painted and dry, then it's time to put them together. And what you want to do is put the two, two largest ones or the two tallest ones in the back and you'll leave a little space between it, but not enough space to put your small one because you're going to layer that small one on the top. And then I just glued it with hot glue and, um, and wood glue here. And I did the hot glue so that it would stay together while the wood glue dries. And now I've just cut an, a little piece of wood shim that was left over 
and I'm going to glue that to the back with both hot glue and wood glue. And that will ensure that, uh, that this holds together nicely. And then once I get these glued together well, then I just take a piece of jute twine and uh, maybe about a 10 inch piece and I tie a knot in each end of it. And then I'm gonna glue that right to the back to make a hanger. And make sure that when you glue it on one side, the other side is glued at the same, at the same height. And then that will hold well because this is not gonna be a heavy ornament at all. These wood shims are very lightweight. So now this is the base uh, for um, all of my candle ornaments. And then I just kind of add different touches to it uh, to give it the look that I want and the design style that I want. Now I had this, um, I had this lace and it was white. I didn't want to wait on uh, coffee stain to dry. So I'm just using my antique ink and just kind of rubbing it on both sides of the ribbon just to make it look more aged. And this is going to be the one that goes on my uh, faith tree. So um, I'm just going to do this one in neutral colors to, uh, to go with that. And I, could, I wouldn't have to use the lace here because this is not the shabby chic one. But I have some lace on my faith tree. So, um, I think the lace looks really good on these. So, like I said, I just uh, aged that up a little bit. And then, I'm going to tie it around my candles. And I also tore a strip uh, from a coffee stain tea towel. And uh, I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to tie that around uh, the candles with the lace. So I like to rip this fabric because it just has a lot better look to me uh, when I rip it. So I just rip a thin strip of it and then I'm just going to tie that right around the center. And I use these uh, on my tree at home also because it goes uh, with just about any design style. Or like I said, you can make it go with just about any. So I, I don't even bother tying a bow in this. I just tie, uh, tie a knot and then glue it together there in the center. And now all this needs is a little hang tag. Uh, you wouldn't have to put a hang tag on it and... Um, the lady that I saw do them didn't, uh, but it just kind of adds more to it. And then, like I said, it kind of uh, helps you um, add more of a design style to it. So this one, because it's going on my faith-based tree, uh, then I'm going to um, I'm going to uh, do this on some music sheet. So I put I have a stamp. Uh, that says Joy to the World, and I use that a lot around Christmas time. Uh, I got this years ago at Hobby Lobby, and I would say that they still have them. Uh, but I'm using a book page here that doesn't have any writing on it, and then stamping it onto that. And then t I'll tear that out and antique around the edges of it. And then I can layer that onto, um, onto my... Um, hang tag. And for my hang tag, I use uh, the little strips um, that you get from the Dollar Tree uh, for children to practice their handwriting on. And those work really well for hang tags. So uh, one side obviously is just white and the other side has the color on it. So I want to color, I want to um, cover both sides of this one. I wouldn't have to do the back and I don't always do the back, uh, but I want this old uh, sheet music 
uh, to cover this with. And like I said, that'll just help it go with my tree. And then it also goes with the joy to the world. So I just cut this the size that I want it and I just cover that and that like I said gives me a good base for a hang tag. And so I antique around the edges of the hang tag and around the edges of my uh, stamp and then uh, glue the stamp on and um, and cut a hole with my hole punch just and I use just a regular hole punch. I know they make them smaller but for me, just a regular hole punch works fine because then when I want to uh, use something larger for my string, uh, then I don't have a problem getting it in. And it so I'm keeping this little hang tag simple uh, because like I said, I just want to keep it neutral. And then I just uh, take some jute twine and, uh, and put it through the hole and put the loop through the hole and then feed the rest through the loop. And then, uh, then I can just tie that on and I'm just gonna tie it on to the ribbon. And then that's all that I do to this little ornament. And uh, I just love these ornaments. I think they look really good on my tree. So that's my first one finished. And then uh, the others I'm gonna do the same way. I'm just gonna uh, embellish them a little differently. So obviously um, the others I've cut my fabric uh, for the flame from the same type of fabric that's starched and um, for uh, this one is here is going to be uh, the shabby chic style one. So um, I'm just very lightly uh, antiquing around the edges just like I did the other one. So I do all three of these. And then I put uh, my candles together just like I did the others. I put the two uh, taller ones on the end. Uh, but don't leave enough space in between them so that I can stack the third one on top. And like I said, I glue that uh, with both hot glue and wood glue. And, um, and uh, then um, add my piece to the back, the little cut piece that I add for extra enforcement. So here I'm just making sure that I had the right height first. So like I said, I put those together and uh, glue them and then it's ready to uh, glue my flames on. So again, I'm using hot glue and wood glue here down the sides and then I'll glue the smaller one on the top and that will glue these three together. And then uh, I'll take my little piece uh, that I had left over and uh, glue that to the back just to give it extra enforcement and I, I use hot glue and wood glue there also uh, and here I am just kind of gluing my um, flames on so I went ahead and did that with both of these and when I did my uh, primitive candles, I used a lot more antiquing on them. So as you can see, they're much darker than my other ones. And I just kept adding the, the antique ink until I got the shade that I wanted. So now they're both ready to add a hang or two and embellish. And then I just paint that flame just like I did with the other. And again, with the flame, you don't need full coverage. You just need to uh, add enough gold to where it looks like a flame. So I'm gonna start with the uh, shabby chic style. And uh, I'm gonna tie some lace around the center. 
and um, and I'm using some pink lace that I thrifted a while back and I've just got so much of this and I love this color of pink so uh, I just tie this around the center and this is a really wide lace so I even had to cut some of the width off of it uh, but again I'm just tying this around the center and then I'll add some uh, glue to keep it secure now obviously on each of these I added the glue uh, to the top and let it drip down just like I did with the first one. And I think that's a really important step that I wouldn't skip uh, because it makes it look so much more like candles. And uh, now I'm just going to add a shabby chic style hang tag. And uh, that will give this the look that it needs to go on my shabby chic tree. And that gave this one a completely different look. And then for my next one, I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to finish my primitive style one. And like I said, I started with darker candles. And then I'm just going to take some gingham fabric and tie around the center of this one and uh, and I decided with this one uh, to take my antiquing ink and add some more darkness to the flame because I felt like this needed uh, the whole thing needed to have more of a warm look to it so once I put my jute uh, string hanger on this uh, then it's ready to add my fabric and like I said I just used a strip of gingham that I had torn uh, and I just used a darker more primitive pattern and um, and then uh, tied that around the center with some uh, jute and some raffia grass and then I just added my primitive hang tag that I added a little rusty star to and I also tied that around the center. And then that gave this one a very primitive look. So now I have one more to make and obviously I'm going to make it the same way. Uh, I'm just going to embellish it differently. And I didn't mention uh, that on this one, this is the first time that I've done the primitive style. And I think I really like it also. I've heard many of you comment that, um, that you're making a lot of these ornaments and that they're turning out really well. So uh, I was hoping that these would be very simple that uh, you guys can make them and it, and it turns out they are because Y'all are getting good results. I only wish I could see them. But then for my last one, I've just tied some uh, gingham ribbon around this and uh, a little bit of jute twine. And so I want to keep this one more simple and farmhouse style. So just tie that around the center. Added a hang tag and some Christmas greenery. And then that's all that I do to this one. So I hope I've given you guys enough ideas that if you want to do these candles, you can make them work uh, with your tree no matter how you decorate it. But as you can see, they're completely different styles, but the exact same ornament. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.